Frösön, Jämpland, Mellan Norrland och Middle Northland, Scandinavia. Year 596. It's been 60 years since the first year of the great winter, the Fival winter. Decades of cold weather, failed crops and plague has characterized the 6th century, and Middle Northland is no exception. People fade away in hunger and disease, with them the language. In a few hundred years the world will be reborn anew, and what we know as the Viking Age takes off. But before all this, before the great winter, how, what did they speak here? What was spoken in Jämplan, Middle Northland, before the Viking Age? Awin so wulon have the sahwehwans, aina no koreano wagna teuhando. Aina no chmikilo kurizo, aina no chumanus neumundo perando. Awis no echaman sagde, herto sairi simek sehwan de echwan sakando humano. Echo sagde dum, a hausi awi, herto sairi thiun sehwan domiz. Humo fadis ozawis wulo workis is warma wastio. Awis o wulo ne hawaisi. Sat hausi da zawis akra flauch. This story is called Schleicher's Fable, here ended in reconstructed Proto-Germanic. This ancestor of the later Germanic varieties is directly tested on writing on the rune stones, but much more sparsely than late texts. The missing pieces have been filled in with comparative evidence from the Germanic varieties attested later in the medieval period, such as Old English, Old High German, Old Norse, and earliest of them all, Gothic. The Proto-Germanic period extends up until the 500s, but there are notable innovations visible before that, dividing Proto-Norse from the continent. In the year 536, a climate catastrophe is initiated, probably caused by a volcanic eruption, triggering a global volcanic winter, which is later extended by more volcanic eruptions in the century. This world-ending event had major impacts on the languages of Europe, North Germanic being no exception. Between the catastrophe and the beginning of the Viking Age, perhaps the most dramatic change to ever occur in the language happened. Almost all unstressed short vowels were dropped. Kharjavaldas were shortened to Haraldr, Thaka to Thak, Sehwamaz to Seum. New signs arose from this period, the lost vowels or the unstressed syllables coloring the stressed vowels before they fell. Sokian became Sökja, Marko became Mork, Raunian became Reina, Horna became Horn, Suniwiz became Sunir. The language ended up a lot more compact than before, with many consonant classes and geminate consonants. Some differing developments split North Germanic into West and East. Beside them, Gotnish on Gotland, and between them, Old Dalekalion. North of it, Old Norse Norse in Jämplan, Ångermalan, Medelpad. This northern dialect later developing into the dialect we know today in Middle Northland. But may the linguistic continuity stretch back even further than the Viking Age. Did any aimed survive the 6th century? It may be, or not, perhaps they all succumbed to its trials, or maybe there were survivors, later linguistically assimilated into the new waves of Norse immigrants in the centuries following. As we lack further information, we turn our attention to our eternal neighbors, the Sami. A very large amount of words were loaned from Proto-Germanic to Proto-Sami. In some cases, they are clearly from Protonos, like Vorsta from Protonos Ostas, Olde Justas, Mano from Mano, Olde Mano, Vokas from Chogias, Gualce from Kolion. 
Something here is not right. A sound change like y to ch is not known in the history of Sami, neither in Norse. What happened here? Let's collect loans from Proto-Germanic to Proto-Sami, those that had the J ending in Proto-Germanic. We may divide them into a few categories, those that have the J directly following a consonant other than K or G. Chauya to Ayo, Thilion to Tilia, Ulias to Ulio, Chamesia to Amantaya. Karyona to Vorjodek. Those that have the J directly following a K or a G. Agyo to Avio. Chagyaz to Avtsa. Chrugyaz to Rotsa. Lukyon to Lukcho. We can also divide the words with an intervening vowel between the consonant and J into two groups. In the first, we have those that have the J in Proto-Germanic, which has been preserved as a J or an I vowel in Proto-Sami. Kaldio to Kaltoyo, Hardio to Hartoyo, Raufia to Rafoye, Rannio to Rannoyo, Hilthio to Hiltoyo, Tinnio to Dinnojo, Raunios to Ravnojo, Chogias to Vokas, Wilthias to Vilto, Ergias to Iros. But in the second group something strange has happened. The Proto-Germanic J surfaces as an affricate in Sami. Skalajo to Skaljo, Dangujana to Tamtsotek, Languion to Lamche, Kolion to Kolche, Braidiana to Ratsotek, Steinion to Stancho, Danij to Tancho, Quedia to Gatche, Wetio to Wotcho. As no change like y to ch is known in Sami, could it be that in this Proto-Germanic dialect there was a special development where y had fortified the fricative, at least between vowels and endings, as well as after velas? Then the loans wouldn't have been skalajo, but rather skalajo, danguijana, languijo, kolijo, and so on. Perhaps even syncopation of the preceding vowel had happened in the Germanic dialect, so the Proto-Sami speakers had actually heard something like Skaljo, Dangjana, Langjo, Koljo, Braidjana, Steinjo, Danjiz, Kwedja, Wetjo. It seems alone came from different Germanic dialects. One or some that have preserved the older y, and this one that didn't. Aside from this, the Proto-Germanic unique innovation, the loans also exhibit some surprising archaisms. No delabialization of g to g before earlier o. Proto-Germanic Danguiana to Proto-Sami Damchetek, Old Norse Dengia. Proto-Germanic Languion to Proto-Sami Lamche, Old Norse Lengja. Maybe G was included in G to B, something that otherwise only happens initially in the other Germanic dialects, so that Danguiana and Languion became Dambiana and Lambion. With the earlier fortification discussed, Dambjana or Dambijana and Lambijon or Lambjon. No monophthongization of I before W 
R and H. Proto Germanic Saira to Proto Sami Saire Old Norse Sar. Proto Germanic Aitingyo to Proto Sami Aitenge Old Norse Atingi. Proto Germanic Saiwis to Proto Sami Saiva Old Norse Ser Seos or Sar. No to long tea. Proto Germanic Nacht to Proto Sami Nachtso Old Norse Nacht. Proto Germanic Rechtas to Proto Sami Rekta Old Norse Rekta. No fortification of W, long W to G. Proto-Germanic Skowo to Proto-Sami Skowe, Old Norse Skoggi. Proto-Germanic Skewas to Proto-Sami Skeves, Old Norse Skyggs. No lowering of E to A, a change otherwise common to both North and West Germanic. Proto-Germanic Wego to Proto-Sami Vieko, Old Norse Wog. Proto-Germanic Snälas to Proto-Sami Snieles, Old Norse Snall. No N to In before, before nasal in the same syllable. Proto-Germanic Lensas to Protosami Lientos, Old Norse Lingr. Proto Germanic Skenso, to Protosami Skiento, Old Norse Skin. As these loans exhibit archaisms that are not present in either Proto Norse nor Gothic, it may be more of a sister language to Proto Germanic itself rather than specifically Proto Norse. Shout out to Anta Aikio, who made the presentation How Did Lapland Become Sami? Reconstructing the interaction of Proto Sami, Proto Norse, and Paleo Laplandic language communities in the Iron Age. Without it, I wouldn't have known about these strange features in the loanwords. Ending with a practical example of how the ghost Nolandic dialect could have sounded compared to Proto Germanic and Proto Norse based on the features we can reconstruct as differing from them. Skenthai swa languio non skutiamaz, lentho saira hau rechto kuti. Skenthai swa languio non skutiamaz, lentho saira hau rechto kuti. Skenthai swa lambjo non skutiamaz, Lenso saira hau rechto kuti. Reconstructing the grammatical endings is harder. We might even have missed important changes to the root syllables or even grammatical features. We'll probably never know much more of exactly how this dialect sounded in its glory days, but we have managed to recover a few pieces from the depths of time. Back to present.